Well, as pretty much everyone predicted, Donald Trump is refusing to concede the election, and now they're going as far as to halt Biden's transition process. So there is a normal process that takes place when someone else wins the election. Donald Trump, the administration, refusing to sign off on the transition. Let me show you where this all starts on November 7th, a couple days ago. Steve Vladek, he is a uh, professor a uh, law professor at University of Texas, tweeted out saying, under the Presidential Transition Act of 1963, a candidate becomes president-elect for purpose of the transition rules when the GSA administrator ascertains that it's apparent that they've won an electoral college majority. Me thinks we're there. Well, he's right. <laughs> he predicted correctly, as a couple days later, November 9th, Law and Crime reports here, little-known Trump appointee's refusal to recognize Biden's victory halts transition process. This right here is Emily Murphy. She is the GSA administrator. Law and Crime writes here, the administrator of the U.S. General Services Administration, GSA, is refusing to sign a letter recognizing Joe Biden as the winner of the 2020 presidential election, preventing the president-elect and his team from accessing millions of dollars in funding and government access meant to allow for a seamless transition of power, the Washington Post reported Sunday evening. Now, of course, Barack Obama didn't do this. He didn't stop Donald Trump from taking over. No, he accepted the results of the election and Trump transition went into place and they got ready for Trump on day one. Yet here, Donald Trump refusing to concede except the results of the election, despite the fact that he clearly lost. If Democrats were trying to steal the election, then why didn't they also steal the Senate? Why did they actually lose house, uh, lose seats in the House? Biden won the election. There's, <laughs> there's no debate about that. Just a matter of time till they drag him out kicking and screaming. And as Nicole Hammer here writes, refusal to authorize the transition isn't just symbolic. It prevents the Biden-Harris transition from getting the funds and access they need to begin setting up a government, an especially urgent activity in the midst of a pandemic and economic crisis. Now, I'm just going to cover some things over the past few days with how Trump has been handling this loss or not handling it. Vanity Fair here wrote on uh, the 7th, saying it sure sounds like Trump may barricade himself in the Oval Office and refuse to come out if Biden wins. The president has reportedly told allies he'll never concede. What a sad little baby. <laughs> you know what's amazing about this? He thinks this makes him look strong. This makes him look weak. If you can't accept failure, you can't ex accept your own failure, you can't accept a loss, all it does is make you look weak. This doesn't make you look strong. It makes you look like the sad little baby you actually are. But, of course, we all predicted this because this is who Trump is. Many tweets, one of Trump's many tweets like this, um, which, of course, Twitter here at the bottom, always correcting, claiming that this is untrue. But Trump here tweeting out on the 7th saying the observers were not allowed into the into the counting rooms. Not true. I'll get to proof in a second. I won the election, got 71 million legal votes. All votes are legal. Bad things happened, which our observers were not allowed to see. Never happened before. Millions of mail-in ballots were sent to people who never asked for them. Yeah, uh, not true. <laughs> Let me show you the reality here based on Trump's own lawyers. Reporting here saying, in one case, the Trump campaign filed in federal court on Thursday in Pennsylvania. Judge Paul Diamond, a George W. Bush appointee, set a tone almost immediately with sarcasm, telling the Trump campaign lawyer, quote, well, you have your hearing. <laughs> By the end of the hearing, the Trump campaign lawyer had admitted, contrary to his initial complaint, that observers for the campaign were in the room to watch ballot canvassing in Philadelphia. So they go in to claim that they were not there only to have to admit putting their career on the line. So they had to admit that, yes, in fact, we did have observers in the room. And <laughs> why are they there? Who knows? In fact, look at this quote. This is unbelievable. When the judge pressed the Trump campaign lawyer on if there were observers in the room for the campaign, the lawyer, Jerome Marcus, said, quote, there's a non-zero number of people in the room. Instead of just saying yes, 
observers were in the room, he had to admit it in a roundabout way by saying non-zero number, meaning more than zero, meaning observers were in the room. <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, look, I'm confident he's going to be uh, escorted out, so I'm not worried about all this right now. Um, but it, it, it sure shows you just how totally incompetent this administration is on top of, of course, you know, being authoritarian in their attempts anyways. Uh, Jake Tapper here tweeting out today, according to a senior administration official, John McKenty, director of the White House Presidential Personnel Office, is spreading the word throughout the administration that if he hears of anyone looking for another job, they will be fired. So even though we know Trump lost, people in the White House going to have to find a new job. The White House Presidential Personnel Office is not allowing anyone to look for a new job. Can you imagine working for an administration or, or, or anybody this incompetent? Just unbelievable. Or I really shouldn't say unbelievable, but stunning. <laughs> stunning in their incompetence. <laughs> Speaking of incompetence, did you catch this? Did you hear about this? Insanity. Trump's big press conference at Four Seasons total landscaping sows confusion. When Donald Trump said his lawyers would be speaking at the Four Seasons, he didn't mean that Four Seasons. So, <laughs> there is a press Trump press conference scheduled held at the Four Seasons, which usually means, you know, the hotel, going to be having a press conference at the Four Seasons Hotel. Well, it turns out, no, it was this landscaping company, <laughs> this landscaping company that was situated between an adult bookstore called Fantasy Island <laughs> and uh, a, a cremation facility for cremating bodies. Um, that's where <laughs> this, this press conference was held. Now, I have to assume this is incompetence. I have to assume, you know, whoever's left on this on this campaign or on this uh, in this administration is just completely incompetent, thought they were booking four seasons. The landscaping company didn't correct them, <laughs> allowed them to book the press conference here and then ended up having to go here because they couldn't get a booking at the actual Four Seasons Hotel. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, look, I guess we got a couple more months of this. I. In terms of the transition process, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the transition. At some point, Biden or Trump's going to be escorted out. Biden and Harris going to take over. It's going to happen. Um, what I am worried about is the power that Trump still has as president, what he may do with that power. I am worried about that. But when it comes to the transition process, look, it's all going to work itself out. And uh, it's <laughs> just don't. <laughs> this, this administration so completely incompetent on top of being obviously authoritarian and dangerous.